Welcome to SDH's coverage of everything going on in USL Championship. We will catch you up on everything going on in a very, very busy week with what is going on in USL Championship. We've got power rankings. We've got goal of the week nominees. We've got young player spotlights. We've got call-ups. We've got recaps. We've got looking forward, looking backward, and we're not going to waste any more time with what's going on in the USL Championship. We're in a no-dilly, no-dally zone this week. So on the schedule, going backward, looking at what is going on in the tail end of the month of of uh, May in USL Championship. Back to last Wednesday, FC Tulsa went to Lynn Family, beat Lou City by the score of 2-1, a, a shocker earlier on, early in the season here in USL Championship. Friday night football was on the East Coast and the West Coast. It was Sacramento Republic traveling to Trinity Health, knocking off Hartford Athletic by the final of 4-1. Phoenix Rising hosting Vegas Lights. Vegas Lights got their first win of the year. It was on the road at 38th and Washington. Vegas Lights winning by the final of 1-0. So Vegas Lights finally, after 10 matches, getting on the board. Kubo Torres with a goal in the 78th made the difference for Vegas Lights as they went and got their first win of the year. Then Saturday... It's where we start with our match of the week. Keyworth Stadium, Hamtramck, Michigan is our first stop. Detroit City hosting Birmingham Legion. Here's your highlights, courtesy of our friends at USL Championship, ESPN Plus, and you too. John looking to jump back in the mix as far as the USL Championship Easter Conference table is concerned. This is a big, big match for DCFC. They get the win last week. If you build on it this week, they... This corner served by McCabe. Lined in! headed just wide of the goal by Amu Mensa. Most dangerous chance of the afternoon so far. But if he puts this on frame, it's tough. I see you do again. Martinez lays it off. Pass slotted up ahead. This is trouble for City. The cross, the shot. It's played off the back line. Stephen Carroll made the save. Over and gives the captain a little pat on the head. That's why he wears the armband, plays like that. Beautiful through ball, left to go. Steinwasher out of the play, squared back. Most cases, that's a tap in. Most cases, it's not Stephen Carroll on the other end. With its youth setups. Thanks, Rodriguez pings that one. Rodriguez around his defender. Rodriguez still with it. Maxi banks it in off the post. One nil city. This goal was made first with a brilliant move to get around his man. Whoops, there he goes. And for the second straight week, it's a doink and a goal. And a city lead here in Hemtramck. Maxi Rodriguez sends that one up ahead, looking to connect with Ben Morris. Morris has it. Simonson up. Run out. Reese Williams, a stop is made. And Oka. But it's worked for him. They're in the middle of the table. And in the quarterfinals of the U.S. Open Cup. Well, they've got some good defense in situations. And sometimes, heck, you can lose a 5-4 and you concede four goals, you still win. And that shot, and Steinwasher gobbles up. Martinez touches it right to Amumenta. Now Amumenta will drive it down, and the whistle stops play. Reese Williams tries to step around with it. Williams goes down. Chris Williams still has it. Williams, O'Neill, Fisher. Fisher, the shot is saved. The rebound is loose. And Van Oko able to collect it. Said he wanted a foul, but credit to Reese Williams. One two work there. Tommy McCabe sends it towards the middle. Connects to Ballard. Ballard lays it up. Maxi Rodriguez bangs it off the crossbar. Boy, Maxi almost had a brace. <laughs> Got all of it and then some. 
The post was kind to him. And nice Ballard cutout. steps up and takes it away. And Ballard makes his way through. Yazi Matthews up with Connor Rutt. And Matthews. 1v2, take it to the Into corner. Into the 18, and the shot goes wide. Maxi almost turned out the lights. <laughs> Maxi Rodriguez almost put it home. Here come Birmingham Legion, though. But Martinez, can he get on the end of it? He does. The cross played away on Mumenza. The final whistle sounds, and Detroit City FC picks up another three points with a one-nil victory. So a big win for Detroit City as they have shaken off what has happened early on in the season, trying to climb out from the bottom of the Eastern Conference. Big win for them at home against Birmingham Legion. Also on the board, Loose City rebounding from the midweek. Went to the mic to do it. 1-0 win over Indy 11. And uh, for them, it was a goal by Calvin Harris in the 20th minute, and it stood in front of 9,500-plus at the home of Indy 11. The mic, Michael A. Carroll Stadium, Loose City comes away with full points on the road. Also on the board, the Miami FC, Orange County SC, goal is draw at Ricardo Silva. Tampa Bay beats Colorado Springs 2-1 at Al Lang as they hosted the switchbacks coming from one end of the world to the other. Uh, J.J. Williams, own goal by Herrera, combined with a J.J. Williams goal, made it 2-0 at the break in front of more than 6,100. A goal by Enriquez at 90-plus-2 closed the margins, but Tampa Bay 2-1 winners over switchbacks. Also, Charleston Battery go on the road to Edinburgh, Texas, knock off RGV by the score of 2-0. It was a uh, brace, by, brace by Williams. 30th and the 64th in the battery. Knockoff RGV in front of almost 5,000 at HEB Park. So Charleston Battery on the road getting full points. Match of the week out west. We go to Toyota Field in San Antonio, Texas. San Antonio FC hosting New Mexico United. Here's your highlights, courtesy of our friends at the USL Championship, ESPN Plus, and YouTube. Three, four, and one lifetime of the regular season in eight meetings against New Mexico United. And we are underway with Katie Goodman and our entire crew. I'm Dan Weiss. Thanks for joining us here this evening on Bally Sports. And the giveaway, Aaron Ball can San Antonio turn into something good. Oluwase, it's Dylan in the box. Dylan, left foot, great save from Timbakis and concedes the first corner of the match as he can as he takes it away from Moreno. Tista, top of the box, Zuhir. Turning back here to his left, Zuhir puts it in, Rina Zuhir! Welcome to San Antonio! And the home side is up one in the 20th minute. There must be something about your debut game here for San Antonio FC because almost every single new guy they've had this season has put it away. Tista, fantastic work. Zuhir taking the space, he's got the turn. He has the wherewithal to take even more and through traffic makes it happen. It's the first professional goal for Rita Zuhir, the 19 year old from Montreal past the outstretched arms of Timbacus. So Jorge Hernandez right at the edge of the 18 yard box here. Looking at the back post. And drops to Garcia! Fabian Garcia has done it! Just before halftime! His second goal of the season and a big one for San Antonio in the 43rd minute. Take a look back at this. It's like the ball's a little bit loose. He gets around it and just takes advantage of it there. And that is the name of the game. Goal's a goal and that's got to feel good being two up on this New Mexico team. So San Antonio FC has put forth a stellar opening. What a turn there from Oluwase. And wins the ball away for the rookie Colonna. Oluwase gets a little bit of a tug, drives his way in, just bounces off Colonna. Colonna has put in front, and San Antonio chips in. Where's the flag up? It's up way off the goal. The offside flag was up. Take a look back here. Three guys on him, a Meg. Almost looked like more of a CFC's gonna have to step up too. Rivas heads it, it's loose, it's in! And United is on the board! But there's a whistle. 
Well, I think this goal will count. I think it's just a matter of getting the ball back and putting it at the center of the park. Almost on cue. Far with the great save early on, but just couldn't get to the end of it there on traffic. Nothing Far could have done in that situation. Caught a little bit flat footed <laughs> there at the top of the five. And it was Kyle Colonna. Of putting a pulse check on San Antonio. Unlucky there for them. Olawashe behind the defense. Olawashe missing on that back post. Oh, a chance for San Antonio FC to. A good pulse check there from New Mexico. Parano! San Antonio FC. No words. <laughs> so many bodies in the box. And San Antonio FC survives. Their first win at Toyota Field since the end of March. 2-1 win for San Antonio in front of just over 8,000 at Toyota Field and full points for the defending champs. One last match on your Saturday at Pioneer Stadium. Oakland Root shutting out San Diego Loyal by the score of 2-0 in front of just over 3,500. Goal in the seventh, goal at 90 plus five. One at the beginning, one at the end. Oakland Roots come away with full points over San Diego Loyal. One match on Sunday. It was Pittsburgh Riverhounds knocking off Loudoun United at Segra by the score of 1-0. And it was a goal in the 78th minute with 12 minutes to go. That was the difference in front of just under 2,900 at Segra. Pittsburgh Riverhounds come away with full points, winning 1-0. So that sets up the standings and tells you where everything is. Battery with the win, 12 matches, 24 points. They're on top of the East. Tampa Bay at 20 points uh, ahead of Lou City. On goal difference, ahead of Pittsburgh on wins, 6-5. to five, They each they all have 20 points, so it's Tampa Bay, Lou City, and Pittsburgh. Birmingham has lost five in a row, 5-7-1 and one now after 13 matches, 16 points. They have had some other things to focus on in Open Cup. Memphis, 9-0-1, unbeaten in their last five, nine matches played. Still have some work to do around everyone else in the East. Nine matches played, 15 points. Indy 11 at 12 points after hitting one in each column la the last three. FC Tulsa has one less win. They are at 12 points. FC Tulsa has better goal difference than the Miami FC, which puts them in the eighth spot, the Miami FC in nine. Detroit City, two wins in a row, and they are now in 10th place at 11 points ahead of Loudoun United, who've lost five in a row. They're now at 3-8-1 and one after 12. Hartford Athletic has, won has lost four of their last five. Starting the season off at 2-7-2, and two, eight points, and they are rock bottom in the east. In the west, Sacramento Republic already at 27 points after their first 12 matches. El Paso Locomotive ahead of San Antonio FC on wins. That's your two and your three. San Diego Loyal is at 20 points on 12 matches there in fourth. Roots having won three of four, 11 matches, 17 points. Switchbacks have lost four in a row. They're down to 5-6-1 and one after a hot start. They're at 16 points in six. The head of Phoenix Rising, who had a two-game win streak snapped. They are in seventh. New Mexico United had a four-game unbeaten string snapped. They're at 14 points. Ahead of Monterey Bay, who's lost two in a row, below the playoff bar in ninth. RGV's at 11 points in tenth. Orange County is in uh, 11th with a record of 2-7-4. and four. And once again, we mentioned Vegas Lights getting their first win of the season. Took 11 matches to do it. They're at 1-4-6, and six, nine points at the bottom of the West. Going through all of the news and notes, getting you ready for the weekend, we mentioned call-ups. And there is a call-up activity for uh, El Salvador in both USL Championship and USL League One. It is Jairo Henriquez for Colorado Springs, North Carolina FC's Nelson Blanco, Oakland Roots, Brian Tamarcus joining the squad for exhibitions against Japan and South Korea in June ahead of the Gold Cup opener on June 26th at Dry Pink Stadium in Fort Lauderdale. They're going to play at Toyota Stadium June, uh, June 15th at 6.10 in the morning before heading on to play South Korea at Daejeon World Cup Stadium June 20th at 7 o'clock. So uh, Enriquez from Colorado Springs, Oakland Roots' Brian Tamarcus will be joining La Selecta for the Gold Cup and their final preps next month. Cool stuff to see that's happening. Power rankings for week number 12 in a USL Championship. Go through the top ten and some of the highlights in the East. El Paso staying at number one. Sacramento up one to two. Tampa Bay up one to three. 
San Antonio up one to four, which means Blue City drops to five, Memphis nine oh one to six, Charleston and Pittsburgh stay at seven and eight, Roots up three to nine, which means San Diego Loyal down to number ten. In the east, Detroit City up after two consecutive wins, two straight shutouts. They're up six to thirteen. In the eleven down to fourteen, Birmingham stays at fifteen. Tulsa up five to seventeen. Hartford Athletic is down four to twenty-one. The Miami FC is at twenty-three. Loudon is last at twenty-four. So that's your Eastern Conference and your power rankings for the top ten. Goal of the week nominees for week number twelve. And once again, remember you have until Thursday, June first at noon. You can vote at uslchampionship.com across all of USL Championships multiple platforms and on the USL app. The save of the week will come out on your Tuesday, and you will have until Friday at noon to vote. Fans' choice for goal of the week, Russell Ciceroni for Sacramento against Hartford. Maxi Rodriguez in the win against Birmingham Legion. Rita Zuhir for San Antonio against New Mexico United. Jairo Enriquez for Colorado Springs against Tampa Bay. So at a Ciceroni, Maxi Rodriguez, Rita Zuhir, Jairo Enriquez. That's your goal of the week nominees for week number 12. Go to uslchampionship.com, the USL app, and all the other social media platforms to vote. Make your opinion heard when it comes to goal of the week and save of the week coming up in short order. Once again, don't forget, be a part of the social media process in the fan zone. Go to uslchampionship.com, sign up for all the news and notes that you need, follow along on social media, on Twitter, on Facebook, and on Instagram, and you can keep an eye on what's going on for Everything going on in USL Championship. We mentioned the schedule. Coming up in short order, there is one match left in the month of May. And it's midweek at Cardinal Stadium. FC Tulsa having to travel all the way from Tulsa to Monterey Bay to take on Monterey Bay FC. And it's going to be an interesting test for our friends at FC Tulsa. And we'll see how uh, Philip Goodrum is integrating with uh, his new club, and uh, all of the uh, the new players around him. Juice boxes. Monterey Bay's at a minus 106 for the 10 o'clock start. Your draws a plus 250. FC Tulsa on the road is a plus 260. Then you turn around. You get your first matches in the month of June. You actually do have Friday night football. 7.30 at Patriots Point. Charleston Battery is hosting Indy 11. Juice boxes on that one. Charleston Battery are a minus 119. Draws a plus 262, Indy 11 is a plus 286. Late match, 9 o'clock, downtown Colorado Springs at Widener Field. Switchbacks hosting Oakland Roots. And for switchbacks, they're a plus 102. Your draw and Roots to win, basically within the margin of error within each other, anywhere from a plus 240 to a plus 245. Busy, busy action on Sunday. And it is... We'll see if we can count how many matches we have quickly before things go off into the midweek. Four, six, eight matches on your Saturday. Seven o'clock at Trinity Health. Hartford Athletic is hosting Lou City. Hartford is a plus 263 at home. Draws a plus 254. Lou City is a minus 111. Seven o'clock at Highmark. Pittsburgh hosting Phoenix Rising. Pittsburgh, a minus 139. Your draws a plus 266. Phoenix Rising on the road is a plus 336. Once again, all these numbers are composites, courtesy of our friends at Odds Portal. 7.30 at Al Lang, Tampa Bay, hosting Sacramento Republic, early contender for match of the week. Tampa Bay is a plus 127. Your draws a plus 235. And Sacramento Republic is a plus 188. Also on the board, 8.30, AutoZone Park. Memphis 901 is hosting the Miami FC. Memphis is a plus 104 at home. Your draw is a plus 245, and the Miami FC is a plus 229. 9 o'clock at the, at the Lab, New Mexico United, hosting El Paso Locomotive, also a contender for match of the week. We might have more than two matches of the week next week, one east and one west. 9 o'clock at the Lab, New Mexico United is a plus 123. Your draw is a plus 237. El Paso Locomotive is a plus 195. San Antonio hosting San Diego Loyal at Toyota Field. And in that one, San Antonio, no surprise, favored at home at a plus 104. Your draw is a plus 246. San Diego Loyal is a plus 231. Two, act, uh, two actions at 10 o'clock. Monterey Bay after action in the midweek having to turn around, but they stay at home at Cardinal to face Loudoun United. 
Loud United coming from one end of the planet to the other is a plus 269. Your draw is a plus 254. Monterey Bay is a plus is a minus 112. Your last match on the weekend is a championship soccer stadium in Irvine, California, Orange County, SC, and RGV. Orange County is a plus 104. Your draw is a plus 246. And RGV is a plus 227. Next activity in the month of June is on Wednesday. We will catch up with that action next week. That's the lowdown of everything going on in a USL Championship. Reminder, if you are in market and can catch any of the home matches, please do quality competition in the second division in the United States. If you are in market and cannot follow along, follow along on your local providers to keep track of your favorite club. If you're out of market and still want to keep track of your favorite club, please do so on ESPN+. Plus. Every match of the USL Championship season broadcast on ESPN+, Plus. if you can't find it through a local provider, and they will have all the broadcasts for you all season long. So that's your story with USL Championship. Very, very busy week, and we'll be back to recap it all for you next week. For everybody here at SDH, I'm just John. Thanks for hanging out with us. For the stories of the USL Championship, play it safe, everybody. We'll catch up with you next time.